So my favorite Internet of Things startup is actually a, a c company uh, called Lively that's making a whole bunch of devices to watch your uh, senior parents. And uh, we're going to get into why that's such a big deal and why they're using Internet of Things and how, how it all works. Lively right now. Hi, I'm David Glickman. I'm the co-founder and uh, CEO of Lively. And we started the company in 2012. Uh, we can get into Lively in a little bit, but just a little bit of my background. I was a product manager at Apple years ago working on hardware. So I'm uh, very excited to say literally 15, 18 years later, kind of returning to building hardware products. And as you said at the beginning, uh, really focused on the Internet of Things connected home world. Yeah. It, you have a really unusual business because, you know, I'm sure all the geeks are playing with little, uh, you know, beacons and, and sensors and, you know, uh, devices probably aren't thinking about building something for seniors, right? Yeah. No, and that's actually exactly why we did it, yeah. <laughs> which is we saw a lot of folks out there doing really cool stuff, but I would put it in the category of kind of cool early adopter let people kind of figure out uses for Internet of Things. And we did some research at the beginning of 2012 and really looked at this area that is called aging in place. So there's this whole phenomenon going on when you look at elders. So elders are generally people in their late 70s, 80s, and 90s who first and foremost, when you talk to any of them, number one thing is they want to live in their own home yeah. as long as possible. I mean, more than eat healthily, more than being connected to family, they just want to live in their own home. And so there were a lot of products out there that were trying to do that. So literally it would be a video camera in someone's home so that their adult children could watch them or their caregiv caregiving team could watch them. Yeah, drop well, cam is like that, right? Drop cam is like that. But not surprisingly, if you talk to someone in their 80s or 90s and they say, hey, we're going to put a video camera in your home or we're going to watch you, they're like, I don't want that. Yeah. And they basically said, not in my house. Yeah. And so we kind of being from Silicon Valley and kind of getting excited about Internet of Things and so forth, said there's got to be a simpler, much more passive, much easier way to do this that's not as intrusive, easier to set up, even has some elegant design to it. Uh, you know, some of my background and some of the rest of the team has been in this space of let's design beautiful things. Yeah. I kind of have this saying that is, it doesn't matter if you're 10 years old or 90 years old, you appreciate great design. Yep. And design meaning the actual physical look of something, how it works, the software interface. But when you look at this space, uh, I'll, I'll borrow a phrase from AARP, the Association of Retired Persons, and they talk about products being big, beige, and boring. Yeah. And that's true. Like in this space, nobody just took the time to really design something with um, just elegance all the way through the experience from the brand, from it's why they, we have the name Lively versus kind of doom and gloom names or I've fallen and I can't get up and, yeah. you know, negative connotations versus positive. So we did this research, went and talked to uh, both elders as well as their uh, adult children about the kind of the needs they had. And we believed, you know what, there's a huge market here. People spend a lot of money caring for their parents, oh, yeah. rightly so. Uh, and we felt like there was a big opportunity. No, so. I, that, um, Miriam's uh, mother is in a, a home right now because she can't walk. And so, you know, there's a need for this. And I see it. I, I'm, I'm hanging out with those people on the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a, fun, not a whole lot of fun crowd. It's not yeah. like going to Coachella. But, <laughs> exactly. but there's a need there, right? That. And so what, what is it that you guys are doing? Yeah, the, so, uh, so the way it works is um, the sensors that you're zooming in on now go in the home. And they're really, really simple. You literally take these sensors and you see this one's labeled kitchen and then there's one that's labeled refrigerator. And the installation is you peel this off yeah. and you put it on the refrigerator door. And then these are measuring movement. So your, your watchers will understand this. These are accelerometers, very simple. Uh, and then there's this hub that you plug into the wall in the home of the elder. Yeah. And this hub is a cellular hub. So you don't need internet connection at all. And that yeah. was a huge, piece of this, which is, think about it, 80, 90 year olds either flat out don't have internet connectivity, yeah. or if they do, the complexity of pairing something to a Wi-Fi base station, it's no, just game believe over. Me, I, uh, my dad is a PhD, very smart man, uh, built, built microelectronics for Lockheed, and now he struggles with uh, learning an iPad, right? Exactly. <laughs> And uh, so if you have to do like Bluetooth pairing or, or all this wireless setup, 
I can do that, but uh, he's just going to leave it in the box. And yeah, not, not that's exactly it. right. So the way the way this works is you plug it in. There's no power switch or anything. You just put the plug right in the back here. Yeah. It just fires on and you start getting signal. So there's no account to set so up. So you, you, you did deal with a cell phone carrier? We deal with a cell phone carrier. Yeah. It's the exact same technology that you see in like a Kindle that has uh, a wireless whisper, connected, that has the whisper sync. net. It's called M to M, machine to machine data connection. It's basically a data data cellular plan in there. Now, do when I buy Lively, do I pay a monthly fee to help pay for that? Or yes. so how you, does that work? You pay, uh, right now you pay uh, $149 for the hardware one to, time. To buy this whole kit? Yep. Okay. Five to six sensors, uh, a hub, and that's one time. And then it's $20 per month. And that includes the ability to uh, have four categories, we call it, four categories that you see uh, the activities of daily living of your loved one. So that's medication. Is mom or dad taking your medication? Uh, one of these is like a little pill box that goes on the pill box and it measures when someone flips over a pill box. The other is food and drink, that refrigerator, opening and closing. It's just a proxy. It's all yeah. about patterns. It's not about trying to know exactly what mom ate because when we went and interviewed people, they said, I don't, it's not that I want to know exactly what mom ate and watch her with drop cam or a video. I just want to know that her daily patterns are on track, that she's being active in the kitchen, yeah. she's getting out. So food and drink. Yeah, this saves lives, by the way, because if somebody really is sick and not able to get out of bed and not, maybe not even get to a phone, they're not gonna to go to the refrigerator and they're not gonna open the front door. They're not gonna do their normal everyday thing, right? And so all of a sudden I get a, a message saying, hey, uh, we haven't seen, you know, or I can just see that she's not opening the refrigerator today. Uh, let's go check on mom. No, know? that's exactly right. We talk about, check on dad, you know? we talk about this idea that what we're really focused to focus on is the prevention of emergencies from occurring, which is exactly what you're outlining, and then also responding if emergencies do occur. And I'll, I'll talk about responding in a second. On the prevention side, you're right. This is saving lives. We had a customer, we didn't even know this. They, she reached out to us. She sent us this really beautiful email where she said that her mom, she noticed that her mom's patterns had changed and she wasn't in the kitchen before 9 a.m., which was very normal for her. Like she'd be in the kitchen before nine. She lives far away from mom. She called mom and then checked in with a neighbor as well. It turns out she's on supplemental oxygen and the system had malfunctioned. And so the oxygen was depleting in her home. Now, thankfully, she figured that out beforehand. So mom basically was sitting in her lounge chair, her, her lazy boy chair, because she was losing energy. She was still conscious, but she talked to mom and mom's like, I just don't feel good. I'm super tired. And, and the daughter realized, oh, you know what? This is why mom has oxygen. She called a neighbor, a neighbor came in, got it fixed, and she sent us an email and she said, my husband and I really feel like this saved my mom's life. And that was amazing. Like we got it over a weekend for the team at Lively. We're like, this is, this is why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. And then the other piece I was gonna add is, so that's all about prevention. Most of the products out there today are just about response. It's in a category called emergency response, personal emergency response. Yeah. I've fallen and I can't it's get out. I've fallen and I can't get out. And what we found is, that's just one part of it. Like ideally what we want to do is prevent those emergencies from happening, which is what these sensors do. Now, if there is an emergency, you want to be able to respond. So the next sensor we're adding, and the beauty of this is once you have this hub, yeah. you can add as many sensors as you want to the hub. Yeah. So the next sensor that we're adding, and this will be out in about 60 days, is emergency response. So it's a pendant that automatically detects if falls occur. It also has a button so that if mom needs to push it, she can. But more important, if mom can't push it because she has a fall where she's unable to push the button, she's not conscious, whatever, uh, it then goes to a 24-7 emergency response system and we've work, we're working with a partner there that calls mom. If mom's doing okay, no problem. If they can't get a hold of her or she doesn't seem right, either a family member and or emergency services is called. So it's right in the plan with Lively, which was get a really simple, you know, classic startup, get a really simple MVP product out there, get it out there quickly, get feedback quickly, iterate on the software. Yeah. And what we heard right away was people wanted not only the prevention part, but also the response part. So our first next yeah. pendant, next uh, sensor is this pendant. So you just wear it on your neck or on your... You wear it on your neck. It looks can be, like I'm wearing a narrative clip that takes a picture. It's a little bit like the clip. The nice thing about this one, though, is you can wear it under your clothes yeah. because it has the fall detection. Yeah. So mom can wear it. It has this nice kind of necklace look. Again, this is what we saw. Most of the other products out there honestly look like... This is a phrase that some of the people in our research said was a garage door opener around my neck. 
Yeah. Again, it's simple. Design, pe- design something that people would actually wouldn't mind wearing. So it has like a really That's nice necklace. That's a lesson necklace. for all of the people who are building wearables. But, you know, uh, my friend Reg uh, runs uh, Glades Conference, and he's saying, you know, this requires a different design skill than uh, like personal computers. Because personal computers don't touch your skin. And something like you're wearing a Misfit. I'm wearing the Shine, the Misfit, misfit yeah. Shine. That touches your skin, and, and there it, it needs it to be empathetic. It, it, you need design that, that really is a different skill set than uh, something that I'm just going to sit in front of, right? I think it's, or I, even a GoPro that I'm just going to yeah, pull. Yeah. No, I couldn't agree more. I think part of it's design. I think also usability changes. So us charging a phone daily, or sometimes more than daily, depending on how much we're using them, we get used to it. It's part of the pattern. As soon as you get into wearables, especially for our demographic, that's actually why I, I'm impressed with Shine because the battery life is phenomenal, yeah. and I don't That's have to charge it. We, I actually less, no, no, this uh, is months. This months. is four or five months, and then I just pop in a new battery. Yeah. Our sensors last 12 to 18 months. On that pendant, it'll be about 12 months, and that's by design, especially for our demographic. Because if you say to an elder, you have to charge something every day or every now, couple ba- days, they'll if never the battery do it. dies or one of these sensors goes bad for some reason, does the software on my phone warn me, hey, this sensor's not working anymore? Or? Yeah, the software um, does a couple things. It warns you right on the uh, screen, and we can get into the software here in a moment. Yeah. There would be a little alert up here. An email goes out to family or caregivers, and then we just ship new sensors. It's part of the plan. It's part of that subscription of $20 a month uh, for the service. And then while we're here, you can see we use this really simple metaphor of faces. Yeah. So the green faces mean everything's okay. Mom's taking her medication when she's supposed to. You can see, I created this for, for our talk today. I made one yellow. Yep. And you can see that means that, hey, she hasn't gotten out of the house for a little while. You might want to check on her. She might be fine. It just might be it's a rainy day. But the reason it went yellow is because the pattern of her normal daily uh, routine has changed. Yeah. And so the nice thing is you can also tap on any of these and it loads up and it tells you, you can see here that she took her medication at 9.52 this morning and 1130 and that's on pattern for her. Um, And you can go into any of these. So like food and drink is kind of a cool one to show because notice all it is is dots. Yeah. So this is this balance of not too much information because what we found is mom, meaning my elder, it's okay you knowing that she's been in the kitchen, she's doing okay compared to the previous days. I don't know if she had cheese sandwich or candy. Yeah. But that's okay. If, if it's at the point where you really need to know exactly what she ate, then you might need home care assistance or she might go into an assisted living community or something like that. But what we're finding is for like overwhelming majority of elders, just being able to share this level of information has done wonders to now keep them more independent. Now this is a sensor on the refrigerator door that, that just watches that you're moving the refrigerator. Yeah, door. and you literally can put it, you know, they're so small that you can literally put it on the underside of the door. You can put it on the top of the refrigerator door. Uh, and again, it's just peel this off and put it on. And these are all, this is pretty cool too, especially with the whole connected devices world. These are all prepared. So these six sensors, we pair them at pack out of the hardware. So there is no... Bluetooth pairing, turn on pairing mode, type in four zeros, et cetera, et cetera. Because if you think about, going back to your point about design, like for our demographic, if you ask them to pair six sensors yeah. and manually do that, it's a showstopper. It's just too can, complicated. Can I get more pill sensors? Because uh, like my dad, uh, my dad had, um, uh, what did he have? He had surgery, he had a, a, a kidney transplant. Yeah. So he has, I don't know, 30 drugs right. he has to take, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Full on. <laughs> yeah, a whole um, regimen. Do you, is it good enough just to put it on one of the bottles that he's going to be in? Or so do it, you need more, more sensors for more bottles? Yeah, that's a good question. So it ships with two and mainly designed to be on pill boxes. Yeah. And the pill boxes being where you are able to, this just goes right on the end of the pill box. So if this was a pill box, imagine I just place it like this. And so it's mainly designed for pill boxes. We did all this research and found, especially in the United States, overwhelming pe- number of people use them. So it has seven days a week, multiple yeah. times a day. Now, if you want to add more, you can call us or go on the website. You can add an additional sensor. We prepare it. So as soon as it comes out of the mail for your dad, he doesn't have to do anything except put it on the pill box. Yeah. And then you would see it in your software, on your mobile phone, you would just see the next tile pop up and see that there's more medication. Now, if it's a pill box, uh, uh, um, you know, my dad has some pills that are uh, last a week or a month. 
Is there a way? I guess is there a way to get just another sticker so you put it on the next one? Or? Uh, yeah. So actually, in the box, we ship with some extra adhesives. Okay. And then again, because it's a model where part of the service is us being there for them every month, if people need more stickers, we just stick them in the mail for them. Very smart. Yeah. You also do something else to make uh, seniors feel good about being uh, surveilled at some level. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. No, no. So what, what else do you do to uh, you know, make, make uh, seniors feel good about having yeah. this in their house? Yeah. Thank, you for, thank you for bringing it up. So part of this was we saw all the products, literally every single other product in this space out there, like we talked about, was harder to use, pretty complex, generally kind of look like designed by someone in a hospital versus in yeah. a home. But also it was just focused on the physical well-being of elders and our research showed that you got to really focus on the emotional well-being and just isolation. That's a huge thing. So it's kind of interesting because on the one hand, elders say, I want to be in my own home no matter what. But they also say, I'm feeling less connected to my family, especially in this world of kids, grandkids, great grandkids going crazy on Instagram, Facebook, etc. And they're not being a part of that experience. And so we said, there's got to be something in this for them. And you're right. Part of it is, hey, you're sharing a little bit about your life yeah. with, the, um, with the hub and the sensors. You ought to get something back. And so part of the $20 a month service is what we call LivelyGram. So you can see here, this is literally a physical. It's great that we have the GoPro because this is a physical thing. It is a physical mailer that comes twice per month. Yeah. And it's made up of photos and little messages from loved ones. And so the way it works is if I switch to the phone, and by the way, it just comes in this bright orange envelope. Yep. So I always say if, you're, if Sally, the grandmother, knows how to use her US mailbox, that's literally all the technology she needs. Now, on the, uh, on the family side, you'll notice here there's a LivelyGram tab. And so what you do is you simply tap upload a picture, and I can choose it from Facebook, uh, Google+, Instagram, Flickr, Picasa, et cetera. And I can also just choose from my photo album. And so if I go into my camera roll, I can pick, this is my daughter playing basketball this weekend. I can pick that. I can add a caption like you yep. saw on the livegram and I hit submit. And this is live. I mean, I'm uploading it now. And that is literally all I do as the okay. contributor. Then we as Lively, as part of this service, take the photos from the various family members and compile them, print now, them how out. Often, how often does this get mailed? Twice per month. Twice per month. Yeah, so about on the 1st and 15th of the month, Sally, grandma, is going to get this in the mail. So the beauty of this is, first of all, our number one customer support inquiry, if you will, by phone and email, is when's my next LivelyGram coming? So we literally get elders who call and say, I love that LivelyGram. When's the next one coming? And especially in these early days, that's great. I'll take that customer support call like all day long. Yeah. Um, the beauty of it is it changes, kind of changes the experience people have with Lively, which is the next time they see the hub, yeah, they, they get it. They get that there's a system here, but they also think to themselves, oh, you know what? My next LivelyGram is coming. And then the nice thing is for Sally, she now has context. So the grandkid calls and she can say, hey, I saw a picture of you skiing. Tell me more about the ski trip. Yeah. And yes, if you look at the demographic trends, eventually almost everyone will probably have a smartphone, even in their 80s and 90s. Yeah. But right now, it's a small, small, small percentage of people. Those yeah. in the U.S., 74 and older. Well, my dad has. Uh, my dad and his wife have iPhones, and they're in this uh, above 70 range, but they don't use Instagram or Twitter. Yeah, I mean, they, they he uses Facebook a little bit, a little bit, but not much. And people love the printed yeah. form. Yeah, uh, they really do. So, for instance, we have not only an independent homes, but also we're selling lively to independent living communities. So these are communities that are established by companies specifically for elders living on their own. Uh, but now it's more of assisted and independent living. Yeah. And it's pretty cool. I've been to several of the, the sites that have Lively and literally you go in at lunch. And so they have a common lunch area. It's one of the reasons people move into these communities because it takes care of food for them. And you go on a day, I purposely went on a day when LivelyGram came out. First of all, the mailroom scene is literally a wall of people kind of going to get their LivelyGram, which is pretty cool. And then at lunch, they're literally just opening up and sharing. And it becomes yeah. this, it's kind of funny in our world, like our, we talk about virality of mobile devices. The virality here is elder sharing this. And then another one of their friends saying, where did you get that? And they start to sell lively, which yeah. we never would have thought, right? We never would have thought that they would sell a system that, yes, of course, has some component of daily, daily activity uh, sharing. 
What, one thing we've learned is if you have family members uh, really paying attention to the elder, the health care gets better. Yeah. Because everybody knows. And subconscious, I think, it, oh, this family really cares about this person. We, and they're always here. We better treat them a little bit better. Yep. And so this is a little bit of a studying thing as well. I bet, I bet the care gets better. The care gets better, and actually, we are uh, doing a because if they get a call in every couple of days because this because they're uh, not moving around, hey, some family Something members watching this yeah. thing. You know? <laughs> well, the, the fascinating thing we're doing a um, a test, a true real deployment. They're buying units and everything with the largest uh, insurance company that provides long term care insurance, yeah. and they want to provide this to their policyholders. The reason why it costs them roughly about $320 a day for one of their policyholders to be in some sort of care facility or have care come to the home. So if you think about the economics of Lively, the return on their investment is about one day. Meaning if they can have Lively in the home of someone and it extends that person living independently for one day, and obviously goodwill because they're bringing something great to them, it's, it's a phenomenal return on investment for them. So we're doing uh, trials with them. Um, there's quite a few different home care organizations around the country that provide care into the home and they're already using Lively to create what they call kind of a safety net yeah. um, so that if I live far away from my mom, I'm not ready to pay for full services for my mom to have care or put her in some sort of assisted living, but I can't get there in case something goes wrong. Um, there's a, a phenomenal uh, organization called Home Instead that has franchises around the country and one of their franchisee owners came up with this idea of this safety net. So he provides lively to the family. I live 500 miles away from mom. If I notice on the dashboard that something is amiss and I can't be there, that safety net is home instead. And I pay a little bit of money to home instead per month to have this incredible peace of mind that there is a local on the ground healthcare professional or home care professional who can help, who can help my mom. Yeah. It's cool. It's very cool. What, how did you originally think about this area? Yeah. Because, uh, it, you know, I, I wouldn't have come up no, with that. No, no, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's a great question. Well, uh, first off, the, the, ver the, the gem of the idea, the credit goes to one of my co-founders. There's three of us. And one of them, Iggy Fanlow, uh, he was the one who at the very end of 2011, 2012, started looking at um, technology, kind of convergence of tech and health and wellness and aging and was kind of looking for the next thing to do. I was fortunate enough to be at the time at a venture firm, Mavron, yep. uh, here in, in San Francisco in a Seattle office, but I was in the San Francisco office and we were kind of looking at connected home, internet of things, pretty much like most VCs are these days. Yep. But we were specifically, and Mavron has a specific focus and great success in the health and wellness space. So we were kind of looking at health and wellness Iggy was looking at um, aging in place in particular, and he was the one who had the early gem of this idea of there's got to be a better way to have some sort of sharing occur of um, daily, what's called activities of daily living, but doing it in a more humane way. Yeah. I mean, this sounds a little Pollyannic, but we really came at it from there has to be a more humane, better experience, better brand, not as invasive, not as yeah. intrusive way to do this. And so um, I got introduced to, to Iggy and our third co-founder, Keith Dutton. Iggy and Keith knew each other. The three of us got together. And really quickly, I decided, you know what? I want to go back into the startup thing that I had done before. And, and Mavron was our early backer. I, I expect not many seniors have a lot of uh, internet things in their house, uh, home automation. In my house, I have a drop cam on yeah, the front you door. You probably have a lot of things. I have uh, Philips Hue lights that yep. I can control off my iPhone. I have a Nest thermostat and a Nest smoke detector and a few other things here right. and there. Uh, Locketron locks I'm getting. Um, so I can unlock my house from my iPhone. Right. Um, are you thinking of making partnerships with those other things to even make this data better? You know, as these ho homes do get... Um, or is that just so... Uh, far from this demographic that you're not worried about it's not, it. It's not that far. I will say one of the things that we're totally focused on is this group of people and this demographic yeah. for now. And that is because we just don't see people addressing the market as well as they could. And no, I, think, I, I, I get why you chose what you're doing. Yeah. I'm just wondering how, how pervasive, I guess, the Nest and the drop cams and the, and the Locketrons or all the locks are. And I probably... My assumption is in this demographic, it's not very... Uh, no, it's uh, not. It's not very pervasive yet. However, 
the whole design of what the way we did Lively is to have this hub, yeah. and to have this hub that's always on and connected and no setup required enables us to add other sensors. So that first one being this pendant that we did on our own. We also will open this up, open up the API, and allow third parties to add some functionality. So for instance, um, one of the big things is in the kitchen, uh, oftentimes for elders, it's important to know if they remember to turn the oven on. Yeah. On oven off, excuse me. So if, it, yep. if it's hot in the room. So that's a simple one. Um, there's things around sleep and beds that would yep. be helpful. Uh, bed it, we'd have bed it here. Yeah, we know the team at Bedit. They do. I have the product. Uh, that's a that's a great example of being able to add Bedit to a system like this. And you you hit upon the the notion of data, and that's a really important component to this. Is that data truly can help save someone's life? There's in internet this case. connected scales. Even if you're trying to lose weight and you really need. Yeah. To me My dad for a while, uh, because of his surgery, had to measure all of his food and be really strict about diet. And so he had a scale, but now they have internet connected scales, so you can actually uh, exactly. track all that. And my, I have a, a Fitbit scale, yep. and there's Withings and Fitbit, and uh, so that's being reported. Uh, you know, all, all of us are uh, quantified selfers are all yeah, into yeah. this stuff, right? So the, the, the seniors, the, I expect, aren't quite into that they as aren't, much as we they're are. They're not as into kind of the experimentation around it. Yeah. If, if you find a solution that works specifically for the things that they need, medication, if I fall, I want to know I'm okay. Uh, I want to share that if I'm eating, and I think that's where scales, that's where bed it, that's where those things come into yeah. play. I think the real key though is, unlike you and I, I have a fair amount of those things in my home too. You and I love to set them up. It's not the end of the world that I have one app to set up my nest and one app to set up my hue lighting and one app to do this. In this case- Actually, I have a Revolve unit that- I was about to say, you could have Revolve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think even with Revolve, there's a fair amount of setup required. Yeah. And so in, in the case of this, make They try to make it easy simple. by uh, using the flash on your iPhone to talk to the device. Yeah. But it still does require a little bit of setup. It's yeah. not as nice as this, though. It's prepared and everything. Exactly. So prepairing is, is a prerequisite for anything that we do. And that's um, probably an advantage of having a single company do all this stuff because you can really prepare this and really make it nice and easy. Where if I had to hook onto the Nest and then hook onto my Philips lights, my Philips lights know that they're being turned on and off, right? It's an internet-connected light. You start thinking about... All sorts of fun, and that, and that probably fits into your uh, into your uh, mission, but yeah. it's harder to do. It's harder to do, yeah. And the idea is that we, with the open API, someone can, yeah. um, using our protocol, can connect this to the hub, uh, and we would allow them to prepare it because all we're doing is sending the pairing signal down to the hub, uh, and uh, the next time the next sensor shows Smart. up, it starts talking to it. Smart. So. Well, I, I like what you're doing. Tech, uh, let's get geeky so everybody else can leave. <laughs> uh, what are the radios that you're using to talk to these uh, sensors? Yeah, so here in this hub, we, uh, we have a version. The very first version is here for the, for the US. It uses a 2G module. Yeah. So this is kind of interesting. So that talks to the cell tower. Talks to the cell tower using 2G. Again, if you think about it, we're sending very small amounts of data. 2G uh, makes it less expensive for the consumer. It's also, we use this phrase, it's kind of the old, sure it's an older highway, but nobody's on it. And so we don't have very many connectivity issues at all. Latency is not really an issue. We're not streaming Netflix. So if I, you know, milliseconds get dropped, it's not a problem. We still get the data up there. Um, we also have a worldwide version uh, that literally works in uh, every country except uh, a couple that don't have, um, don't have GSM. Uh, but other than that, we literally can deploy this anywhere in the world. So we've already start, we already launched in Australia, we launched in the UK in about a month and a half, and we'll just continue to roll them out, Smart. which is fantastic. Uh, and then the protocol between uh, the sensors and the hub is Bluetooth LE. Uh, we really chose that specifically because I think, I think we nailed it in the sense that there are, in the Internet of Things, there are Zigbee and some other things out there. What we found is that, especially as it becomes ubiquitous in these phones, um, having that as your standard, I think, goes a long way. And our, to our kudos to our electrical engineering team because the range on these is pretty significant. So sometimes the wearables, they keep the range very low so that keep you can battery. talk to the phone on the battery. In our case, we've been able to do pretty, low range, uh, pretty great battery life and range is about 30 to 50 meters uh, between a sensor and the hub. And it depends on the walls, right? Yeah. So this concrete wall, obviously that's gonna degrade the signal. But if you think about our use case, most elders live in relatively small, uh, yeah. smaller settings. So if you're in about a two to 2,500 uh, 2, square foot 
uh, home, you have great coverage. Yeah. So even Bill Gates, he has this huge house, right? But the family lives in three thousand square feet. Yeah, they yeah. probably do. And I also say like. Bill could buy a couple of these if he needed to. <laughs> I think so. I, I, <laughs> if his home is that big. <laughs> I don't think he would have a problem with yeah. a few of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah but exactly. uh, I think Bill's a, a ways away from needing uh, uh, to watch himself. But um, yeah, it's an interesting product. It's an interesting company. I, oh, and thank how you, you very came much. up with this, because it, it's not the average Internet of Things. You don't really think about s seniors when you're thinking about Internet of Things or wearables or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think. You know? I think one of the, the really important things about where or connected devices in general is kind of vertical approaches. I mean, kudos to the Nest team. They, yeah. they took one kind of pain point that people have and just focused on that. Um, and we're kind of doing the same thing, which is focus on a pain point where there's definite need, where people are spending dollars to try to help their elders and just nail those use cases versus yeah. kind of the more uh, horizontal approach, I think is, is more of a challenge. Definitely has traction in the early adopter crowd. But that's a pretty small crowd yeah. uh, in, the, in the overall scheme of things. And so, and we just love learning more and more and more about our specific group of people that we're trying to serve. And there is, again, sounds a little Pollyanna, but it's true, there is uh, just great joy out of trying to do something that can help families, yeah. not only elders, but families who are, have a lot of angst. You and I are probably getting to the point where, you know, my father's 82. Uh, he, he has a lively system uh, and not only is a great tester, he's become I think he could be a beta tester now for other people. He's learned a lot, but also he's getting to the age where he needs these devices. So as we yeah. all grow, it's great to kind of build something that can have a great impact. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for coming out. Uh, we get, where do you get more information on it? Um, easiest is the website, mylively.com. Mylively. Uh, in addition, uh, you can buy it on the website, you can buy it on Amazon. It'll actually be in retail in the next couple months, uh, which is going to be great. And then obviously we're doing a lot of work with the community of organizations out there that specifically are focused on helping elders like Home Instead and, and others. So the app works on iPhone and Android? iPhone and Android and tablets. And then we didn't show it today, but the same same interface we were looking at obviously looks on, works on a website as well. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Thanks. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me here.